This week on Christian World News, journey with us to one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. I come from a very ancient, perhaps one of the most ancient cultures in the world. 6,000 miles from the shores of America, the tiny nation of Georgia fights to preserve its Christian past, present, and future. Georgians have always had to defend their faith, even to the last drop of blood. And meet one of Georgia's most famous men, leading the charge to protect faith in his nation. <laughs> 여러분 안녕하십니까? 크리스천 월드 뉴스입니다. 오늘은 조지아 특집으로 전해드립니다. 조지아는 1990년 구소련이 붕괴되면서 러시아로부터 독립한 신생 국가 중 하나인데요. 특히 조지아의 깊은 기독교 신앙이 뿌리 내리고 있다는 사실은 잘 모르고 계실 겁니다. 수천 년의 역사를 가진 조지아를 소개해드립니다. 1947, Azerbaijan is to the east, Russia to the north. Levan Vazadze is a Georgian businessman. I come from a very ancient, perhaps one of the most ancient cultures in the world. An ancient place where people speak a language that's over 2,000 years old. Ethnographer Luar Sab Togonitse says his is a country that has also witnessed its fair share of turmoil. Georgians go through a lot. Because of the geographical location, many armies, invaders would pass this way. History here is measured in millennia, not centuries. And throughout the ages, your country has been the playground for numerous empires. The Ottomans, the Persians, the Greeks, the, the Byzantine Empire, the Romans, the Mongols, the Russians. In the capital city of Tbilisi, the ancient and modern mix seamlessly to create a beautiful portrait of Georgia's rich culture and traditions. One of the best ways to take in the sights and sounds of uh, Tbilisi is to take one of these trolleys up the mountain. In filming these scenes of Tbilisi, and stunning countryside landscapes, Georgian cameraman Georgi Shamazana said it best. Every time I travel in different regions of my country, I feel like I'm traveling through thousands of years of history. Georgians are legendary for their hospitality. They believe guests come from God and as such are treated with honor. Their food, mm, is simply out of this world. For example, you have this amazing dish, it's called Khinkali, and the all famous Hachapuri. Friendship is highly valued in the society, and family is paramount. But if there is one thing many Georgians cherish most, it is their faith. Vasadze says Christianity, above all else, has protected and preserved his nation. The reason Georgia remained what it is, because our nation has a profound feeling of responsibility to holding on to the eternal features of our national character, which by all means are rooted in the Christian culture. Georgia is one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. 
Its Christian heritage can be traced here to the small town of Mshketa. It was around 326 AD when a woman evangelist named Nino started preaching the gospel here. And where these two rivers meet, two main rivers of Georgia, uh, there was a big baptism. And it's considered to be second Jerusalem for Georgians. It's a holy place. Christianity spread to the rest of the country and in about 10 years became the state religion. Five crosses symbolizing Christianity's influence adorned the Georgia national flag. Dating back to the fourth century, the church has played a significant role in the society. In fact, about 80% of Georgians say they belong to the Orthodox Church. Georgians have always had to defend their faith, even to the last drop of blood. Iona Gamrekeli is a prominent leader in the Georgian Orthodox Church. He says over the centuries, many Christians became martyrs for refusing to renounce their faith. In 1226 alone, Muslim invaders beheaded more than 100,000 Georgian Christians. There have been numerous attempts by invading armies to force us to give up our faith, but we never back down. Ellen Kavlelashvili is curator at Georgia's National Museum. She has in her collection priceless manuscripts, rare Bibles, and other historical artifacts documenting Georgia's Christian heritage. Today, the role of Christianity is even more significant as we face new challenges. Kavle Lashveli believes her country today stands at a crossroads, with the countries of Central Asia, Russia, Europe, and the Middle East all vying for cultural and religious influence. She says tiny Georgia must once again stand to protect her heritage. I hope Georgia's example of unconditional love and dedication to faith are a testimony to all mankind. People should realize that the absence of faith is disastrous for a nation. Christianity is how we survived in the past, and it's how we will survive in the future. Georgia is the most famous Christian country in the world in the world. During the past few years, the government of Georgia has been held in the past few years. 굳건하게 신앙을 지켰습니다. 최근에도 조지아는 새로운 문화와 가치관으로부터 국가를 지키기 위해 노력하고 있다고 하네요. 25 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Georgia's Prime Minister says forging ties with the West is in his country's best interest. There is a very clear will of Georgian people and population to be pro-Western, to be pro-European. The tiny nation of Georgia lies between Russia and Turkey, while the majority here favor closer ties. We are not saying we are against West. I always say I'm a big enthusiast of selective westernization of Georgia. Many like Lovan Vazadze insist the opening must not happen at the expense of Georgia's faith and family values. We'll take all the productive, progressive things from you, but we'll throw in garbage all the nonsense. And unfortunately, in this particular case, this means your current pseudo-moral standards need to stay outside of Georgia. Vasadze is a prominent Georgian businessman and pro-family advocate. The pseudo-moral standards he refers to are efforts by the U.S. and E.U to force Georgia into accepting homosexual practices and same-sex marriage as societal norms. If you think indecent, radically sexual behavior is what you want to do, that's your choice. But if I think that this is an embarrassing sin, I want to remain in society which is allowed to say that. Much to his dismay, the Georgian parliament, under pressure from the European Union and with help from international pro-gay groups, passed a controversial law in 2014 making it illegal to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexual orientation. Vazadze says the decision amounted to the legalization of homosexuality in Georgia. You say this law is part of an international agenda. What is that agenda? To destroy a family. I, I, I believe the front line of this war is in every living room and in every bedroom where your wife and my wife, our children, sleep. 
The front line is now spreading to Georgian classrooms, with children as young as eight being taught gender theory. To somehow alter and change. Tina Tin Khorbaladze is director of a pro-family organization. She says the aim is simple yet alarming. To change the thinking of the children, to be open and to accept the things that still my generation and elder generation consider to be not really acceptable. Georgia is deeply conservative. More than 80% of the population here say they belong to the Orthodox Church. And polls show a majority side with the church in opposing anything other than traditional heterosexual relationships. We feel the responsibility for the future of this country, for the future of our children and next generation. But not everyone agrees with the church's stance on marriage. Some human rights groups have labeled this country one of the most homophobic nations in the world. Are you afraid for your life? Um, As for me personally, yes, because my life is in danger in Georgia, and not just because of my sexual orientation, but because of my professional activities as well. Georgi Tatashvili is transgender. He rarely gives interviews, but agreed to meet with CBN News at an undisclosed location in the capital. He is a lawyer for the LGBT community and says he has paid a price for it. They've arrested you, they've beaten you. Yes, many times I was beaten by policemen, ordinary citizens, and in general for many people. Tatashvili made headlines earlier this year when he became the first person ever to file a suit with the Constitutional Court seeking same-sex marriage. The lawsuit is still pending. A majority of Georgians today believe that what you're doing, your lifestyle is sinful. And they say that you are destroying their country. No, oh, it's I think that this is the case, and I'm not surprised people feel this way. The principles of secularism are practically violated in Georgia. The Orthodox Church puts so much pressure on the society to make sure Georgian human rights are not extended to include LGBT people. Meanwhile, Levan Vazadze worries the pressure to become more accepting of homosexuality in Georgia will only intensify following last year's controversial Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage in America. He bemoans the fact that since the ruling, many in America are too afraid to speak out against homosexuality. You can no longer freely express your opinion about what's shameful and what is disgraceful, and you are uh, crucified for that. The whole concept of sin is being abolished. Where is it? Uh, the metamorphosis in English language is staggering. I studied it since I was a child, and I remember that shame meant shame. In modern English, when someone says it's a shame, he or she means it's a pity. So we see a gutting of the concept of shame. Vazadze is praying Georgia never reaches that point. He's urging his fellow countrymen to be bold in proclaiming the truth in love. Is it your opinion that the church in Georgia, Christians in Georgia like yourself, are in the end going to determine the future of your country? What else? Of course. That's it. Nothing else. 유럽에는 교인이 없어 문을 닫는 교회들이 늘어나고 있습니다. 하지만 조지아는 정반대라고 하는데요. 한 사람의 노력 덕분에 교회가 유지되고 있고 심지어 부흥하고 있다고 하네요. 
and he leads one of the oldest Christian communities in the world. The history of the Georgian Church dates back to the first century AD when the apostles of Jesus Christ entered Georgia and preached the gospel. At 83, this elder statesman has been affectionately dubbed the most trusted man in Georgia. He's the spiritual father of Georgia and a wonderful example of what it means to be a humble servant of God. You've probably never heard of him, but here in Georgia and surrounding countries, Ilya II is more famous than movie stars and politicians. Patriarch Ilya II is the most respected figure in Georgian society. In fact, his favorable poll numbers are over 90%. In an exclusive interview conducted at his private residence, Ilya II, whose official title is Patriarch of the Georgian Orthodox Church, spoke with CBN News about his country's deep love for God. The church's past is intertwined with the people and history of our nation. In the 4th century AD, Christianity was officially declared as the state religion. That makes Georgia one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. Tucked between the Caucasus Mountains and the Black Sea, more than 85% here say they belong to the Orthodox Church. And while many neighboring European countries have seen religious adherence fall, Christianity in Georgia is witnessing unprecedented growth. We are like the little spiritual oasis in the middle of this region. Patriarch Ilya II was installed back on Christmas Day 1977, and since then he has managed to single-handedly revive the Georgian Orthodox Church. He took over at a time when Christianity was under severe persecution from the Soviet government. The Bolshevik invasion in 1921 witnessed the unmerciful destruction of churches and monasteries across Georgia. Sergo Vardotsanitse is a professor of Georgian history. There were 1,500 churches and 1,600 clergymen active in Georgia. When the Patriarch was installed, there were only 50 churches and barely 70 priests remaining. He initiated a range of reforms to rebuild the church, including an emphasis on young people. He reached out to the youth, encouraging them to attend church and to consider the priesthood. He also took steps to make church services more engaging and easier to listen to. The church showed signs of revival in the late 1980s. Men like Ione Gamarekeli, impressed by the patriarch's humility and dedication to service, decided to join the priesthood. The patriarch stretched out his hands to the people and the people responded. He preached God's word and people turned to God. Then came the Soviet Union collapse in the late 90s, which led to Christianity's renewal. The changes have since been profound, now there are more than 2,000 active churches, with new ones being built every year, like this massive structure rising on the outskirts of Tbilisi. Also, more than 3,000 people have joined the priesthood, serving the spiritual needs of Georgia's nearly 4 million people. It has been said that the patriarch inherited a church that was severely persecuted and covered in shroud. Now it is a living body. Nearly three hours after arriving for the service, a slow and frail Patriarch Ilya II finally makes his way through the throngs of worshippers that have gathered to hear him speak this Sunday morning. CBN News is granted unprecedented access to film as hundreds of men, women and children line the ornate halls of Holy Trinity Cathedral to receive a prayer or special blessing. The Patriarch always says that all that's been achieved during his reign is because of the Lord's will. After decades of religious repression, many are grateful that the church in Georgia has not only survived but is thriving thanks in part to one man's desire to bring his nation closer to God. Many kind achievement has been accomplished and I thank God for letting me undertake such endeavors for our nation. Georgia 특집으로 전해드린 크리스천 월드 뉴스 오늘 준비한 소식은 여기까지입니다. 저는 다음 주에 인사드리겠습니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다.